So what's the old saying? I think it goes, if you feed someone a fish, they'll eat for a day, and if you teach them to fish, they'll eat for life. Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. We're going to talk today about how I make a decision on a sensor or an automation setup. And really I'm trying to teach you how to think through these things and it comes from my experience as an industrial automation engineer, how I designed some of these systems and how I saw some of these systems designed. So working in industrial facilities, what you always find is that you're designing for a set of process parameters. And this is one of the the most important things for you even as just someone automating your home this is what you want to try and achieve as well you want to create a set of process parameters now that sounds complex but it's not as complex as you think so I'll give you an example of this and you know when you go into an industrial facility what you end up with is talking about what's the temperature of the product you're working with what's the density what's the What's the viscosity or what is it what is it doing? How fast is it moving? Things like that when you're working in a process facility. Now, when we're talking about in your home, we're just talking about the little things that are going on as you want the automation to occur. You saw me start in the shower there in the video or in the bathroom, and you know, lucky for you, you didn't actually see me start in the shower, but you know when we talk about that situation the important thing to start with is what is that trigger moment what is the moment that you want this automation to occur and you probably already know that but you may actually return to this as part of this process so we'll get to that but start with that moment and and let me tell you how that moment can really affect you if i talk about the shower situation then you know if i want to start with the water well that's a very different set of parameters or process conditions than if i just start with someone entering the room so it's really important to start with defining that moment that you want the automation to occur after you've done that, and let's say that for the shower situation, I define my moment as someone enters into the outside bathroom, and that doesn't mean they're in the shower room. That just means anytime anyone's in that bathroom, I want that automation to start. Well, now what are the process conditions or what are the conditions in that bathroom at the moment when I want the other automation to occur. Now, defining that, you should think about things, and sometimes it'll come to you very quickly, but I want you to not jump ahead here. I want you to not jump ahead to the solution because, again, I'm trying to show you how to think through complex situations. So, you know, with this situation, what happens is the temperature is being controlled by my home and I know that the temperature is relatively the same as the rest of my home. The humidity is relatively, again, the same as the rest of my home. Now, on top of that, the lighting. Now, when I go into my bathroom, the lighting is going to come on in the bathroom. That's based off of other automations that I have. So, with that in mind, I know that as someone enters that room, one of the conditions is that lighting has turned on. There are some other very basic things that you could think about in this situation or that you should define as part of your conditions. You could think about the time of day, but it could really be any time of day. That is actually a condition for you and something you need to identify. Now, on top of that, you know that someone has entered the room and so there is a presence in the room. Other conditions include the water might be on, it might not be on. So that's not a process condition, it is a possibility. It's something you kind of throw out. And once you've identified all of these conditions, then what you do is you define that moment and you start to define what changes at that moment that you want the automation to trigger. And here's where it starts to get really simple for you because you've defined these things up front. Your trigger moment, you know what that trigger moment is that you want to use. You 
you know what the conditions are at the moment. Now, what happens right in the moment as you go and you want this automation to occur for the situation that we're defining right now, it's as simple as someone's walked into the room and the lights have turned on in the room. And I know that from my second step in the part of the process here. So now that I have that, I can use either of those two things. And what's interesting about this, because I'm already walking in the room, now I don't even need another sensor. And so we went all the way in that in that situation. What we could have had is we could have said, okay, well, our situation is we want the shower light to come on whenever we turn on the tap and we could have put in a leak sensor in in the shower we could have put in a motion sensor in the shower we could have put a number of different things but by breaking down the scenario what we actually discovered is we don't need another automation device we can just tie these two automations together and it becomes very simple for us so guys i hope this has helped you to really look at automation just in a little bit of a different way and I'm going to continue with this series as we go here throughout the channel. The next thing I want to talk to you about is redundancy and so what you're seeing on the screen right now is a link to automation basics here that I want to give you guys over time that playlist is available for you to go have a look at and hopefully some of these change just one or two little things in your home. So until next time guys thanks for watching and we'll see ya.